We are Fran and Rich. And for the last six years, we've been living and travelling aboard our narrowboats on the inland waterways of Britain. We've been travelling with our two companions, Jess and Archie. Now we also have Percy, the motorhome, to further extend our adventures. So why not tag along and see the UK through our eyes? Last week, Fran got a fit of the giggles trying to open a stubborn lock gate. We also visited the beautiful town of Pershaw. Now we've moved on a couple of miles, found a fabulous mooring spot and are going to climb a hill and clean out the stove. It's a little bit tricky navigating your way through this fine six arch 14th century bridge. The river before it is quite bendy and the bridge suddenly appears. Straight after this you've got the new road bridge built in 1928. Almost equally as good looking. The River Avon just keeps giving and giving. This has been a mooring for the last 24 hours nearly. We arrived yesterday lunchtime and have been all on our own. Another boat joined us just literally overnight and left first thing this morning. But it has been so peaceful. Yesterday we stopped at lunchtime, just got the chairs out and sat reading and spinning. But we've had an early start today. We were awake early because we're going up to do a big walk. But on the far bank, we're full of fishermen, complete with all their equipment and all their very expensive gear all along the bank. So we're cruising that way later. I've got a feeling there's going to be a little bit of rod ducking and diving. But um, the fishermen all seem really friendly along here. So anyway, it looks like it's a not bad morning. We've got to get off up Breeden Hill. Here we are climbing up Breeden Hill and uh, the views, we're about halfway up and the views are stunning already before we've even got to the top. We're keeping our fingers crossed for the weather, the sun's mm, at the moment, <laughs> but it's, they've promised us rain. But uh, yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's a little bit misty in the background, so whether we'll see as far as we should be able to see, I don't know, but it is still stunning. Breeden Hill is a thousand feet high, that's about 300 metres. And we're about halfway up at the moment. That place behind me is called Woolus Hall. And you know when you've got too much money when you've got a crystal chandelier <laughs> hanging in your greenhouse. That greenhouse is bigger than our boat. <laughs> but the um, Breeden Hill has got really ancient history and there's um, evidence of settlements going back to Iron Age. And there's been um, Roman coins found here, hordes of Roman coins. There are apparently earthworks and standing stones, so we're keeping our eyes open. We are. We're imagining we're seeing things. I think we have seen earthworks, but it's uh, it's difficult to know for sure, isn't it? The only but hoard we've found is blackberries. Look at those. They are beautiful. I might have a black tongue, actually. We've yeah, eaten them might. once. <laughs> we've bought snacks to have at the top, but this is getting us up there, isn't it? It is so. indeed. Right, yeah. onwards and upwards. Let's go. Yep.
Well, we did it. We reached the top and it's taken us one hour, 45 minutes, which I think is pretty good. We took the gentler slope. There was a steeper route to take, but yeah. that was enough for us, wasn't it? Just a steady walk because we're always stopping and gawping at the scenery. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, yeah. been fab. But the views are amazing, despite the fact that it is a little bit hazy out there and we can't really see the horizon. No. You can see, what did that lady describe it as? The checkered blanket of all the four counties five, around us, five counties Apparently all around us. you can see us. five counties, so that would be Herefordshire, Worcestershire, Shropshire, Gloucestershire. And something shit. Somewhere else, sure. <laughs> but... Um, it is a very, very special place. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And it's, it's a shame this folly behind, I don't know when it was built, um, is now a BT telecommunications room thing with uh, phone masts all the way around it. So how they got planning permission for that, I'll never know. It was built as a folly for one of the churches. Uh, I, don't, I think it's called Parsons Folly, but certainly for some of the uh, church owners or church leaders over the years. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a very, very special place and it's got a little bit of a sad air about it, hasn't it, as well? Yeah, so maybe that's the the weather atmosphere today. It's a bit melancholic, isn't it? It might be. It might be. But the poem that was written this was about this was a very sad poem, very a bit of a tearjerker, wasn't it? No. Um, so maybe I'm reading more into it than needs to be. It's a great but, poem, lovely poem. Yeah. So uh, snack number three now, Fran. Yeah, we've You've had... Um, munching... <laughs> blackberries all the way up yeah and a boiled egg we've got a boiled egg and now it's a banana and, and some water and then we've got an apple a local apple for the way down not bad not healthy bad. right let's do that then let's go This tower called Parsons Folly was built for John Parsons MP in the 17th century, intended as a summer house to view the surrounding countryside. It's been the weirdest of summers, hasn't it? It hasn't been anything of a summer, really. Not really, no. We've had a handful of days where it's not even been hot, hot, really, has it? Just been no. warm. None the of maximum those we've had is 27 degrees and that was yeah. for one or two days, but nothing to write home about. None of those nights when you can't sleep and all windows no. are open, is there? Thank goodness. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it has gone really, really quickly. Maybe we're in for Indian summer. Oh, who knows? <laughs> we often get that these days. We get late springs and summer stretching out into October, don't we? No. Yeah. So, yeah, the nights are drawing in and it's... Uh, Short haul into darkness. That just reminds me of me nan that does. The nights are drawing in. Yeah. <laughs> the sun's come out and it's raining at the same time. And I'm hot, so that's uh, good. I could have a nice downpour now. What did you think of your walk up Breeden Hill? I loved it. Absolutely loved it. I can't think of a better way to spend a Sunday morning than that. Um, it's a shame we've got to cruise, but we have. Yeah, we've got to get going this afternoon, get ever closer to Tewkesbury. And uh, we're going to have to find a... We get two nights in at the moorings in Tewkesbury. And then we're going to have to find a marina, aren't we, for a couple of nights while you're away. I'm leaving. <laughs> we're not often apart. The last time I was on my own for a few days, you went for a little art excursion, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's very rare that I leave you. But... Um, You've got company, you're going to have neighbours for a couple of days, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, and have Pete next to me from One Day More Aboard. Is that a get it right then? What did you say? One Day More Aboard. Yay! <laughs> and um, I haven't been picking up other people's dog poo. It's just yet more blackberries. Yet more blackberries, so that's a crumble coming up. Might be a pie today. Oh, let's have a pie for a change. Yeah. What a great idea. Yeah. Well, just uh, on the way into Great Cumberton Village, there's a grape, we're going to say a grape yard. <laughs> grape yard. <laughs> a vineyard. 
So uh, there's quite a few hundred uh, vines there. I wonder how much you need to make a few bottles of wine, Fran. I don't know. You only need you don't need many elderberries to make about three or four bottles. Yeah. So yeah, that's more than we would need anyway. I've never I've never made wine full stop, so I wouldn't know. So, I've never uh, made it from grapes. So. If there are any wine making connoisseurs out there, let us know how many grapes to make a bottle of wine. <laughs> We've got enough yet. Nearly. There's never, ever enough of blackberries. And it has been a good year. So is, we've been munching them all day on and off. And you spend the rest of the afternoon picking the seeds out your teeth. And we've got blue tongues, but I'm not showing you. Ow. Well, I think we've got enough books on the boat, friend. Interesting. I've just come out for an evening walk in the village of Great Comberton and come across the church. I can't get into the church because it's locked, unfortunately, but Look at this tree in the grounds of the church. It's an 800 year old yew. Churches often have yews planted in the grounds because they were sacred trees and often here before the churches, they were planted on sacred ground and the churches came after them. But this is a fantastic tree, 800 years old and the branches are coming down so low that they've been supported almost making an archway up into the church. How wonderful is that? I've never seen so many fruit trees as we've had in the last week or so. Apples and plums, because it's a fruit growing area, but also so much mistletoe. Because the mistletoe grows on the apple trees, it's everywhere. So I don't want to mention the C word, but um, it seems like not only the shops are getting ready for the festive season, but so is nature. I think I'm going to try and pick a couple of those. It's that time of year again. The temperature really dropped yesterday. Boat next door had its fire on and um, condensation on the windows. So it's back to porridge for breakfast, our favourite winter start to the day. It's only September. Scottish porridge, Scottish honey. <coughs> Yummy. Well, we've got our old togs on and it's time to get some jobs done inside Laura Maisie. Other people seem to do um, spring cleaning. We don't do spring cleaning. We always intend to, but the weather warms up and we like to be out doing stuff. So it ends up being autumn clean. And also we just like to get the boat ready for autumn and winter, don't we? Other we do. people have had their fires alight already. The temperature suddenly dropped last night. Didn't it? The nights are dark. In fact, we're losing, worked out this morning, we're losing 15 minutes of daylight a day at the moment. Yeah. So we want to be really cosy for winter. So yesterday you got the window out, didn't you, <laughs> next to the dinette and gave that a good brasso in. I'm doing it window by window because it actually takes a long time and that's cleaning out all the gullies there where the window slots in, um, getting rid of the cobwebs and all the dust and dirt so we've got good drainage and polishing the metal work. Um, one window a day, it sounds like a little job but it was about two hours it polishing, wasn't time, it? Yeah. So yeah, one a day is enough. I got the shower door off and cleaned all the grout in between the tiles and uh, took out all the old silicon from around the shower base and it was a bit wet down there wasn't it so I'm a bit concerned but um, I'm leaving it to dry for a few days so uh, it's a uh, cat lick for a shower for the next few days. There's a lot of grunting and huffing and puffing was a lot going of on. Huffing. I've got to say though no bad words came out no, and you were very good but I, his poor old knees are a bit sore this morning. Yeah spent the day on my knees virtually. 
But today is a bit of a mucky job and uh, it's probably the muckiest job we have to do on Laura Maisie. Yeah, we're cleaning out the um, fire completely, checking that the um, fire ropes are good in the door, cleaning all the glass, cleaning the chimney. And every time I do this, we've done it quite frequently, I have to watch a video of which way the fire bricks go in yeah. and out and slot on, otherwise it's just a nightmare. So, yeah, rubber glove time, I think, because so it's a bit grimy. Got the spray paint out because the surface of the fire is a bit uh, rusty from where we've had pans, cooking suppers, etc. Yeah. And uh, spray paint the doors again. You go up on top and brush the chimney. I That's collect all the debris. And then my job is the inside of the fire. You'll do the fire ropes. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Check the doors. And then you're painting, aren't you? Yeah. So a couple of hours and we'll be having a cup of coffee and some cake. You'll be lucky. No cake. Bourbon biscuit, maybe. Oh, well, second best. <laughs> Yuck. Oh, dear. <laughs> so I've taken the cowl off and I've attached the brush to the drill. See how this goes. Are you ready down there? She's ready. Oh my goodness. Oh, dust flying everywhere. Creating another job. Oh well, as long as it gets it done. Oh blimey. That's working really well. Created another job. So Rich has done his bit upstairs on the roof. I don't know what's come out. Not too much actually. I've cleaned out completely inside it. Oh, no, no. Yeah, a fair bit has come out, so I've got this all out. The fire bricks actually look in pretty good condition in there. They're all not cracked, everything's fine. So it's just a case of taking it all out, cleaning it, and putting it all back together again. So this is the um, tray inside the top oven, which we use for cooking quite a lot. We don't like using chemicals to clean things, so I'm going to try the good old baking soda trick on this. Um, and a little bit of elbow grease. So we'll see how shiny I can get that. That's my challenge. Let's have a before and after then, yeah. shall we? So I've taken the doors off, taken the glass out, give that a blooming good clean. The uh, rope looks pretty good condition, as I'd expected, because we only put it in there in the spring this year. So take it outside now and give it a spray. Well, that's a mucky job done, <laughs> and we're so glad it's over. We've had a bit of a spruce up as well. It makes you feel so grimy when you've got soot oh, coming down the chimney yeah. at you. But um, And it always, we put this job off because it feels like it's going to be a bad job, but it's not that bad really, is it? Just... It took a bit longer than we expected. It was about two and a half, three hours from start to finish, but yeah. it looks a lot better now. So it we're does. happy. We're ready to light the fire. We're going to try and make it into, at least until October. Mm. You actually mentioned November yeah. the other day. I think that's a yeah. bit optimistic. I've got some thick jumpers to put on. Yeah, we have. Um, so all I've got left to do now is dig the chimney out of storage. And that really needs a good going over with the brass. So probably another two and a half hours to get that clean. But um, I like polishing a bit of, with a bit of brass. You that's do. You love a polish, don't you? And look at this. Look, that's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. And um, that's just baking powder. And the reason we use that is, as we say, we, we're careful not to use any chemicals when we can because all of our grey water, which is the sink and the shower water, just goes into the canal. That's what happens with narrowboats. Um, and obviously it's just polluting. There's fish out there, there's plants out there. So we try really hard not to use any strong cleaning stuff. Nah. Bicarbonate or baking powder and vinegar is just the best and it thing. Fizzes it fizzes up, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's really good. It's worked well. So I've now, even worse job than that is I've got to give the oven a good clean, haven't I? Yeah. So with the same method, a little bit of elbow grease. So you've got to do the chimney and you've got to do the oven. Yeah. And I've got to finish weaving a shawl and make another shawl. And I'll edit and... this video. <laughs> it's supposed to be a quiet life, isn't it? <laughs> 
So anyway, thanks very much for watching. Thank you. Um, we hope you enjoyed that. Give us a thumbs up. It really does help this channel get seen by other people. It does. Don't forget to subscribe. And a big, big thank you to all the patrons and members and everybody that buys our stuff. And that gives via Kofi, coffee. We don't know yeah. how it's said, but... Um, and special thanks. Yeah, it all, all adds to giving the dogs a treat and us a treat and helping us. So thank you. Ta-ra. Bye.